Hey there, welcome back to another Make Science Easy Chemistry lesson. In this lesson, we're going to be learning all about elements, compounds, and mixtures. Now, this is a really, really important lesson, and it builds on lots of the concepts that you've already looked at when you've looked at the states of matter and about elements and particles. But before we look at any modern ideas that we might have about elements, compounds, and mixtures, I want to have a quick look at some of the ancient ideas that we used to have. So, the ancient Greeks first thought about the idea of elements. Before the ancient Greeks, no one had really thought about what makes things up. And the philosopher Empedocles thought that everything was made of four elements. And those elements were fire, air, water, and earth. So his idea was that everything was made up of these four things. After a while, a fifth element called ether was added by the philosopher Aristotle. So the ancient Greeks had these ideas that everything was made up of these five basic elements. Of course, we now know that these ideas are incorrect. We now know that really it's not just five things that make up everything. But what is it that makes everything up? Well, we still call these things elements, but we now know that there are lots and lots more of them. So, what are the elements? In very, very basic terms, elements are the simplest occurring natural substances. And they cannot be broken down into anything simpler by chemical means. Now, what this basically means is if you have an element and you react it, you cannot make anything simpler. It is possible to break down these elements using other methods, non-chemical methods, to give you protons, neutrons and electrons, but don't worry about that for now, that's something that we're going to look at a little bit later on. And really importantly, elements can only contain one type of atom. So compounds, which again we'll look at later on, can contain two or more, but elements only contain one type of atom. And in the universe, there are 92 naturally occurring elements. So what this means is that every single thing that you see in the universe, the earth, you, your computer, anything at all, is made up of these 92 naturally occurring elements and nothing else. Now, the simplest way to think about this is think about language. You're listening to me speaking English right now. There are millions of words in the English language and all of them are made up of 26 letters and nothing else. So with those 26 letters, you can make millions of words. Well, elements make up every single thing in the universe and there are 92 of them that make up everything. It's also worth pointing out there are a very small number of artificial elements that have been created in the laboratory, but these do not exist in nature, so they're obviously very, very rare, and they do not make up things that we'll find naturally. Okay, so I'd like to look at what atoms are and how we find them in our elements. And if you look at the picture here, we've essentially got 16 circles, and this is a very, very, very simplified model of what atoms can look like. And it's worth noting just right now that all of these atoms are the same. So this is an element. And the reason why it is an element is because it only has one type of atom present. If there was more than one type of atom present, it would not be an element. We've got another example here. We can see it looks slightly different. We can see that these circles are atoms, are in pairs. But if we look, there is only one type of atom present. And if there is only one type of atom present, then this is an element. I'm going to introduce you very briefly to something called the periodic table of elements. And we're going to look at this in much more detail later on. But it's worth recognising for now that the periodic table of elements contains the names of all of the elements. And these elements are grouped based on their properties. And later on in the course, you're going to find out what those properties are. I very strongly suggest 
that you download a copy of this. You can find it with all the materials for this lesson. It's going to be very, very helpful for you. So, we now know what elements are. They contain one type of atom. So we now need to know what compounds are. And if we look at the picture here, we can see a compound. Now, the very first thing that we need to notice is that there is more than one type of atom. If there is more than one type of atom, it cannot be an element. So, compounds contain two or more types of atom, and they are chemically joined together. Now, this is really, really important. In order for something to be a compound, the different types of atoms must be chemically joined together. We can have more than one type of atom that is not chemically joined together and it will not be a compound. So, a compound must have two or more types of atom that are chemically joined together. We'll also see that molecules of compounds always have a fixed ratio of each element. And if we look at our picture here, we can see there are an equal number of the green element, which is chlorine, and an equal number of the grey or silver element, which is sodium. So our compound is sodium chloride. And because there is always an equal number of each type of atom, there is a fixed ratio. And in this example, the ratio is one to one. So all compounds have a fixed ratio of the elements within it, but that ratio can change depending on which compound we have. So here we have another example. We have two different types of element. So we have two different types of atom as well. And we can see that the blue atoms are in a ratio of three to one with the gray atoms. And this compound will always have that ratio. So whatever compound you have, there is always a fixed ratio of elements within that compound. The final thing in terms of elements, compounds and mixtures is, of course, mixtures. And if we look at the picture here, we can see there are four different substances in here. Two of them are elements. Two of them are compounds. But mixtures are generally made of either compounds or elements or both of them. And mixtures always contain more than one type of substance. So the mixture that we have here doesn't matter what this mixture is, but there are four different substances in here. And these four different substances are not chemically joined together. Now, this is really, really key. Remember, in a compound, the elements are chemically joined together. But in a mixture, the different substances are not chemically joined together. And this means that the ratios of substances are not fixed. So substances can be added or can be removed. So we can see that one of our substances here, we've now added more of it. So the ratio has changed. The ratio is not fixed in a mixture. And mixtures can be separated using physical means. So we do not need a chemical reaction in order to separate a mixture apart. We can do it physically. So, in summary, an element is made up of only a single type of atom. They cannot be broken down into anything simpler by chemical means. Everything in the universe is made up of 92 naturally occurring elements. All elements can be placed inside the periodic table, which is just a way of organising them to make them easier to study, to make them easier to understand. Compounds consist of two or more types of elements which are chemically joined together and cannot be physically separated. Atoms in a compound always have a fixed ratio. And mixtures are made up of multiple substances that are not chemically joined and are not in a fixed ratio and they can be separated physically. So, I hope you understand the basics of elements, compounds and mixtures. Until next lesson, keep on learning.